The markets have been crashing. The sky has been falling. Jamie Dimon, CEO banker of JP Morgan Chase, is calling Bitcoin, has called Bitcoin a fraud. Let's look at their follow up actions as a company, compare them to their Wikipedia page, and let's talk about that. Also, arguably one of the most oppressive countries in the world, China, may be banning Bitcoin or Bitcoin exchanges or ICOs or something. It doesn't really matter since it's all fear, uncertainty, and doubt anyways. So at this point, most people know the drill, yet some people are freaking out over the news and they still want to sell everything they have back for the fading fiat. So is Bitcoin headed to zero or is Bitcoin headed to $25,000? With so much panic, banks and governments around the world and their actions, are we close to the tipping point? And what's the cost of selling or not buying Bitcoin with everything that's going on and the potential for the future? Let's discuss. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Gary Palmer Jr., you're you, and together, welcome to Minting Coins. So thanks for showing up, thanks for being a part of this video. There's a lot that we're gonna be talking about, going over some of the highlights of the news that we've been hearing about for the past couple of days, and getting uh, sort of the pulse on where we're gonna be going to through this second half of September, uh, and into the, the upcoming news for everything else that's happening in terms of the development of Bitcoin, the Bitcoin blockchain technology, and other developments in the space as well. You have the Ethereum uh, Metropolis update, hard fork, starting to happen as soon as tomorrow, Monday, and uh, just so much development in terms of what's happening with Lightning Network and the development of Bitcoin and uh, uh, atomic swaps, decentralized exchanges, and uh, just it's really exciting. It's really interesting to see everything that's going on. So here we uh, have taken a couple of days off before we've been making a video. Sorry that it's, you know, been so long. I guess there's been a few life changes and life adjustments for this time of year and just in general. Some of those um, not so good and, and creating a lot of difficulty. And then others, uh, a, a lot of fun just with the kids going back to school and, you know, having five children. It's uh, a lot of work across all those different schools and all the different responsibilities and everything that's going on. Uh, and then having this channel to keep a regular routine and to regularly look for, through the news, to syndicate, to see what's out there and to uh, curate that information and bring it together as a part of this show. So I really want to thank you for sticking around, being a part of these shows uh, and listening to the information that we're bringing just because we really believe that it's really important to understand what's happening in terms of the development of the rules and the regulations and the different parties who are involved in this space so we can sort of have a sense of the, what we should do and uh, with our understanding of where this industry is headed. So as we do hit this tipping point, as the technology does visibly take off to the mainstream users, you and I and everyone here who's minting coins and who's a part of minting coins, we're already on that wave. We're already uh, a part of what's happening, what's going on with the understanding and the position in this emerging industry. So with that being said, let's go over, take a peek at the news or the, the market recap and then look through the news and, uh, and let's discuss. All right, so starting over here at coinmarketcap.com, we have 865 different currencies and a total market capitalization of $128 billion. So this is a lot lower than where we were last week when uh, we were at, what, $140 billion, $150 billion. We had lost a lot, and a few days ago, you can see in the seven-day mark right here, a few days ago, maybe about three days ago, I believe, there was just this massive drop and this uh, massive 
bottoming with all of the news that has been coming out with the fear and the certainty and doubt and the doubt coming from bankers in America, coming from China, coming from other places across the world as well. Um, but the Bitcoin dominance is strong. 47% is where it's at. And we have uh, Bitcoin currently with a per price at over $3,600 per coin. So uh, Ethereum right behind it, $25.6 billion market cap, 271 with the Ethereum. We have the Metropolis update coming out, them switching from a, a purely proof of work blockchain to a, a hybrid proof of work with the traditional miners using electricity uh, and then also having the, uh, the, the, the proof of stake and uh, using Ethereum tokens and having a thousand Ethereum uh, Ether tokens to uh, to create a node for the, the proof of stake. Um, and that's going to be a major shift uh, with uh, how this industry is going. The proof of stake, to stake tokens, like having a thousand Dash or having a thousand Ethereum or having 10,000 PIVX or any PIVX really, uh, because you could stake any amount of PIVX or with 10,000 PIVX, you could have a super node. Um, what else? Uh, and uh, we're seeing the same thing happen with the OMG token with Omizigo. And they're saying that that's going to be a purely proof of stake coin, just like uh, the PIVX is a purely proof of stake coin. And we don't yet know how many OMG tokens it's going to take. Uh, moving down here, it's number 10 in our list right now, over $1 billion market cap, currently $10 a token, uh, up just uh, 5.8 percent this, this is really really low uh, compared to where it has been and uh, considering the bottoming out of the market you know it's really everything is a great buying opportunity omizi go is looks great uh, neo looks great ethereum classic looks great especially with the conference coming up a lot of information um, happening a lot of development happening really interesting indeed um, taking a quick peek at these prices in Bitcoin, we see Ethereum is up 7%, IOTA up 8%. Um, yeah, just keeping a peek at these prices in the Bitcoin price. All right. So at this point, I think we're all pretty well aware of the drill and what it is that we want to be doing. Um, don't sell. You know, generally speaking, we know that there's going to be ups and there's going to be downs because this is a market. Um, and this isn't investment advice this isn't money or financial advice uh, but we do know the the markets go up and the markets grow go down and according to this one reddit post you know this person is making the case that there's a small group of people who are attempting to manipulate the exchanges and it's this person's recommendation to ignore them to not sell and, and it's just pointing out that they're attempting to steal your money and we see that because we see the information come out and we see the drop in the price, and then we see all the uh, all, you know um, everyone losing when their positions are are shorted, and then uh, and then we see other people come in and like just purchase all of that Bitcoin at these rock bottom prices. This has been a cycle that's happening since Bitcoin was less than a dollar, and this is a cycle that's going to continue to happen. Um, it's happened multiple times with China. It's happened multiple times in the United States. It's going to continue to happen. And uh, what we've seen is that Bitcoin is extremely resilient to this. Bitcoin is not just one country. It's not just one exchange. It's not just one group of people. There's no uh, single owner or entity or constituent group. And so while they can have effects in the market and can affect the directions of these fluctuations um, long term the the market is going to uh, you know be the final determining factor in if Bitcoin goes up or if Bitcoin goes down and so it, it's just when you hear this news coming out from the major media outlets or when, you know, when the bad news comes out, that's when all your friends will text you and say, hey, I heard Bitcoin is crashing or hey, I heard Bitcoin is a scam or hey, I heard Bitcoin was used for that hacking virus attempt. Those are just situations to separate Bitcoin from the weak hands uh, so that other people can purchase that Bitcoin 
And then we just see story after story after story where think about all the people who sold their Bitcoin at $600, all the people who sold their Bitcoin at $1,000, and they're looking at the market six months later, and they're seeing the direction that the market is happening. Even if it's taken uh, a couple of years after the, after the crash in 2013, the, the market's still correct. The markets are still coming back. And as the demand is increasing and the direction that our society and our world is headed, there's only 21 million Bitcoins that will ever be created. And uh, everyone is doing what they can to purchase as many as possible. And so one of the companies who are potentially purchasing uh, a lot of Bitcoin or as many as possible, and if not for themselves and for their customers, and if not for themselves and their, their hedge funds, then uh, in, their, in their companies, then surely they're looking at these for themselves as well. And so what we know is that the JP Morgan clients have been purchasing Bitcoin since, as you probably heard, Jamie Dimon's, the, the JP Morgan Chase CEO's warning against Bitcoin and the blockchain uh, or the really the Bitcoin technology specifically. And so, uh, uh, again, uh, Jamie Dimon made the controversial statement. And so he was condemning Bitcoin, threatening to fire portfolio managers within JP Morgan who have been trading Bitcoin. But despite this, uh, JP Morgan Securities LTD has been purchasing massive amounts of Bitcoin through the Swedish Bitcoin exchanges when the price had dipped after uh, Jamie Dimon said what he said. And so uh, it's really interesting because a lot of people are saying that Diamond demonstrated a complete lack of knowledge of the structure of Bitcoin and the blockchain technology and the way that it works fundamentally. But I'm really wondering if that's true. Uh, I think Jamie Diamond is an extremely intelligent person. And personally, I think Jamie Diamond knew exactly what was going to happen. Even if he thinks that Bitcoin is a fraud, even if he truly doesn't believe in Bitcoin, uh, I, I would definitely think that he's smart enough to understand that if he says bad things about Bitcoin as he did, then that's going to cause a market drop because this is the pattern that we've seen over and over and over again. And we know that the portfolio managers and the hedge fund managers have been purchasing into Bitcoin, that people have been purchasing into Bitcoin, that that companies like JP Morgan are making money from these transactions. And uh, and so it just it just seems to me that Jamie Dimon would understand that his words would cause the Bitcoin to crash and then allow his people to purchase Bitcoin at uh, extreme discounts compared to where those prices were over a thousand dollars more per Bitcoin uh, just a you know, few days previous. And uh, just for clarity, what was purchased was massive amounts of the Bitcoin XBT. And so similar to the digital currency groups, Bitcoin Investment Trust, the GBTC in America, Bitcoin's XBT is an investment vehicle allowing institutional and retail traders to invest in Bitcoin. Uh, and this is a strictly regulated channel in public stock markets uh, in Sweden. And so then we have some images here that uh, you can check out where it's just pointing out the trades that were happening from JP Morgan Securities, LTD. And um, yeah, and just seeing how that happened and just having this information in front of us. So it's all clear to us when someone says something is illegal and then immediately their employees or you know people inside their circles are purchasing it. It's uh, it, it's it's not even that interesting anymore simply because it's happened so often. But it's important to bring it to people's attention that this is a repeating pattern because it's going to happen again. We don't we 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 want the effect of this to be less and less as the frequency and severity of these sort of attacks uh, increase in in the market and in the media. So JP Morgan Chase, uh, you know, we're not going to go through all of this, but just in terms of talking about Bitcoin's fraud, it's really interesting to see all the controversies that are being talked about with JP Morgan Chase's connection to things like Enron, if you've ever heard of them, or WorldCom, or all of these failure to comply with money rules and mortgage overcharging, 
of active military personnel and uh, truth in lending and alleged manipulation of energy markets, uh, all sorts of obstruction and sanctions violations, uh, mortgage issues, speculative trading, mortgage-backed security sales, all of this, uh, made-off fraud, uh, hiring program uh, controversies, corruption investigations in Asia, the 20, uh, 2014 September cyber attack. It just goes on and on and on, the situation with J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, especially with the 2008 mortgage securities situation. Um, yeah, it's the pot calling the kettle black, right? All right. But it's not just J.P. Morgan. It's uh, also the China situation. And so since the J.P. Morgan situation and the China situation, the Bitcoin price has relatively stabilized and has been maintaining its value over that $3,500 watermark and uh, is currently around that 3660 as we saw just a little bit ago in the market recap. Um, and so we have this news coming out of China, and uh, even though this news is coming out of China, it's, it's it's taking a huge hit to Bitcoin because there's so much speculation in Bitcoin overall. And not only is there so much speculation in Bitcoin overall, but um, there's a lot of money going into Bitcoin specifically from China. So, so uh, what do we have here from this article from the Merkel uh, that China represents only 12% of all the Bitcoin trading volume and the news that's coming out of China in theory should only affect citizens, uh, Chinese citizens or people who are seeking to use Bitcoin inside China. website it's not working well okay well and then there's this uh, this quote that was really interesting and I've heard of uh, before and I've heard different um, different quotes similar to it uh, when I was in San Francisco and Silicon Valley that the lesson from the internet is anything that China bans invest in it let it be Google or Facebook or in this case Bitcoin, uh, because you know if if China says it's a it's a bad thing, it's going to create more interest in it. It's the same reason why Bitcoin isn't legal in America yet. It's the same reason why Bitcoin isn't illegal in America yet. It's because if they make it legal or illegal, that's going to increase the demand for the for the asset for the item. And so this is uh, definitely creating a lot of attention. All the people in China who we're not talking about Bitcoin. Now that they understand that this is so bad and that this is so banned, this is incredible. This is an incredible amount of marketing for Bitcoin uh, that is just getting the word Bitcoin and education about Bitcoin in front of so many more people who weren't otherwise looking into it or purchasing it. But the time is getting really short as we've seen the price of the Bitcoin grow exponentially and everyone is predicting the price of Bitcoin to continue growing exponentially. Um, you know, the time that you have between now and the next jump is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as the as the jumps get bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how that all plays out. Okay, so we've looked at this website for before. And so this is a simple website used to track how John McAfee's $500,000 per Bitcoin bet in three years is going. And so if you guys remember this, uh, John McAfee was talking about if he was going to eat his own uh, penis. I'll just say that. I think that's a show-friendly word. <laughs> and uh, And... And so is he going to? Are we on track? Yes, we are on track. No, he is not going to eat himself out on TV. The current Bitcoin price is $3,700. Um, this might be a little bit old or it's using a different exchange. But this price index is at 21.67% ahead of John McAfee's price prediction. And uh, if the price was to drop to... 
all the way down to $3,063, it would still be on target for the $500,000 per Bitcoin by the three-year deadline, which is not ending for another 1,033 days. So uh, we are definitely on track to meet this prediction. I think this is really interesting to, to sort of see where we are um, and, and to really understand what the price of Bitcoin would need to be at and what, you know, how far ahead are we from the price target. It's uh, going to be really interesting to see if we hit this price target before, um, before that deadline. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. All right. So, and so it's really interesting with all of this buying and all this selling because a lot of this advice that we hear about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is to not, not spend what you can't afford to lose because this is such high risk and because there's so many unknowns. People have a lot of issues in this world. They have a lot of responsibilities, a lot of accountability. And it's really important that you take care of those responsibilities, that you pay off your existing debt, that you, you know, just have your priorities straight. And so you definitely don't want to uh, invest money that you can't afford to lose. But at the same time, once you do have your fiat invested, once you do have skin in the game, once you do have a, your own Bitcoin wallet with a little bit of Bitcoin in it, then it's also really important, especially in these times when there's so much fear, uncertainty and doubt coming into the market to recognize to not sell more, to not lose more, to not give, you know, to, to release more of that Bitcoin back uh, than you can than you can afford to lose in the future. Because if this value does increase, you know, on one hand, you've already invested the money if you have invested. And so you, you could think about that as being gone, it's already gone, you already invested it. And so if you have, you know, without getting into how much Bitcoin is, if you have a thousand, if you have as much Bitcoin as would equal a thousand dollars in today's money, or $10,000, it really doesn't matter. And if you were to cash that out, then, uh, you know, you have that $10,000 right now, or you have that $1,000 right now. But if Bitcoin, if or when Bitcoin 10 X's, and then that $10,000 would have been, you know, grown to $100,000, then could you afford to lose that other $90,000 that you would have otherwise had? Uh, because if, if, you're, if you're not a part of the ecosystem, if you get in and you get out, then that's just a short-term thinking. It's a short-term uh, playing in terms of what's happening in this space. It's like investing into the internet, investing into SMTP or WWW or HTTPS, and then um, selling all your stock or selling you know your position in that technology before AOL even existed yet for the for mainstream users. And so it's the, the thinking is that we are gonna get to the point very, very quickly, increasingly quick within, you know, in increasingly uh, quick development and releasing of technology and tools for people for everyone to utilize this technology. You know, there's other news that's just coming out. We're hearing about Facebook and Google creating uh, wallet payment systems right inside your browser. It'll be interesting to see if they work with Omizi Go on that. But, um, you know, just there's a lot happening in the space with uh, creating the pathways and the connecting infrastructure to allow everyone in the world to interact with cryptocurrency because businesses and financial institutions and uh, you know general organizations across the world, they want the blockchain technology to increase the speed at which payments happen across the world. And so this is gonna facilitate uh, the speed at, that payments gonna happen and that's gonna unlock a lot of capital inside uh, the marketplaces all across the world. It's going to open up the world. It's going to open up businesses. But in order to get there, there's going to be a, a lot of volatility. There's going to be a lot of ups, a lot of downs. There's going to be pumps. There's going to be dumps. There's going to be market corrections. And there's going to be jumps up that are 
completely unexpe unexpected. Um, I mean, there's day traders out there and you can definitely day trade, but it's just so random and there's so much volatility and there's so much risk that it's it's just a safer, surer bet to, to instead of trying to time the market, to just to have more time in the market. And when we get into times like these with China or with uh, different countries or with bankers or different financial institutions or whatever the, the next crisis is from the Federal Reserve or the Treasury or uh, legal jurisdictions across the, the you know, United States government or wherever you may be, uh, when the dips happen, buy the dips. And when the FUD is happening, if you need to sell, sell. But it uh, might be a smarter idea to hold or uh, you know, to, to, to buy high or no, to buy low. <laughs> so when it's dipping, you buy, you buy the dip. As Bitcoin Morpheus says, buy the dip. And then when, uh, when the price is shooting up, you either hold or, or you sell when the price is up. You don't buy when the price is up. Um, long-term holder, long-term thinker, uh, keep paying attention to what's going on. Keep recognizing that we are just in the most early stages of this technology. We're in the most early stages of development. We haven't even begun to scratch the surface yet. And, uh, you know, after the Internet was really, really popular, uh, you know, Facebook was just starting to be developed and people still didn't realize the fundamental ways in which the Internet was changing all of our world, all of our society for the next generations that were happening all around us. And so. Um, So there's so with that being said, uh, and with all the information happening, just keep paying attention, hold on to your private keys, be really cautious about what you hear and just try to recognize what are the attempts to part you from your Bitcoin, from your tokens, because other people, it's just like your actual money, they would much rather have your money than you have your money. So it's really important that you have your security, you have your backup plans, you're paying attention, and you're recognizing the different sorts of market manipulations when these happen. All right, so thanks for sticking around. Thanks for being a part of this video. Click like in this video. Leave your comments in the comments below. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, follow us over on Steemit where you'll be able to see the different links that we have uh, in the, in the sh for the show notes, and that'll be linked in the show notes below, where you can follow us over there, give us an upvote as well, and uh, keep the conversation going. Uh, with that being said, thanks for showing up, and I'm glad that together we're minting coins.